Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the February 4th, 2013 Washtenaw City Council meeting and ask that you please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Rose, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Boger? <coughs> Councilmember Plinsky? Here. Councilmember Greenlee? Here. Councilmember Lindsay? Here. Councilmember McDaniel? Here. Councilmember Shoemaker? Here. Councilmember Freeman? Here. We have not, uh, that I know of, heard anything from Councilmember Boger this evening. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay, hearing none. Uh, first, pardon? Oh, I didn't hear anything. I'm sorry. First order of business, we have a proclamation this evening for Women's Heart Health Month. <clears throat> Whereas heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States, it affects men and women of every age and race, and whereas more than 64 million Americans suffer from one or more forms of cardiovascular disease, including high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, congestive heart failure, stroke, and congenital heart defects that can lead to heart disease, and whereas by developing good eating habits, being physically active, and taking advantage of preventative screenings and avoiding drugs, tobacco, and excessive use of alcohol, Individuals and families can significantly reduce the onset and burden of heart disease. And whereas many heart attack victims do not recognize the sign until it's too late, only one in five is able to reach a hospital quickly enough to benefit fully from treatment. And whereas far too many Americans are unaware of the danger of cardiac arrest, 95% of sudden cardiac arrest victims die before reaching the hospital. And whereas February has been declared American Heart Month, we encourage all Americans to join in the fight against heart disease and to learn more about how to prevent it. Now, therefore, I, Sean Gard, Mayor of Washigal, do hereby proclaim February 2013 as the American Heart Association's Women's Heart Health Month, and in doing so, encourage citizens to learn more about its risk factors, its warning signs, and life-saving emergency response techniques by joining with the American Heart Association and Women's Heart Health Month. And with that, our first order of business are public comments. Any members of the public that would like to address council? Good evening, Harvey. Harvey Olson, uh, 3903 R Street. At the January 22nd council meeting, Councilor Shoemaker stated that the current policy of charging a minimum of 10 units or 7,500 gallons per household for water usage back to actual gallons used should be examined by council and staff in a decision made regarding a change in the current billing criteria. During citizen comment time, I agreed with Councilor Shoemaker's comments. In discussions with other Washougal residents, I find that a large percentage of homeowners do not use all of the 7,500 gallons per month they are charged for. In particular, retired one or two person households or on a fixed income. The 10 unit minimum discourages water conservation. How? Example, House A uses 5,250 gallons or seven units. House B uses 7,000 gallons or 9.333 units. Both pay for 10 units or 7,500 gallons. So House A ends up subsidizing House B's water payment for one half the difference. House B pays for half the difference between B and a third house that uses a full 10 units. So the less, you subs the, the less you use under the 10 unit minimum, the more you pay per gallon and end up subsidizing the houses that use more water. Is this fair to our lower income and retired residents, particularly in the current financial climate? 
This begs for questions to be asked and answered. Number one, who initiated the process to change to unit pricing? Two, why and how and when was it adopted? Three, how was the amount of 750 gallons that equal one unit arrived at? And why were 10 units decided as the minimum for all residents to pay even if they used less water? If a resident uses an additional 200 gallons of water over the 10 unit 7,500 gallon minimum, are they charged for the actual 200 gallons used or are they charged for an additional full single unit of 750 gallons? The water usage pricing for Washougal residents should be amended to actual gallons used and the proposed review of the current minimum of 10 units 7,500 gallons pricing policy cannot come soon enough. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Is there anyone else that would like to address council? Could I have a... No. I, I Sorry. came in a second late, but I heard uh, Mr. Olson's questions. I wondered if we can get an answer to them at some point. I thought, they were good, I thought they were good questions. Certainly. We'll get those answers and get them distributed. Are there any other... Marilyn, good evening. I'm Marilyn Tyrrell. I'm at 950 G Street, Moshugo. Um, currently, there's a, a lot of uh, sound on the uh, radio about radon. And I remember some time ago, the city council was gracious enough to buy some radon uh, meters, whatever you call them, uh, and make them available to the residents. Uh, I called the fire department today, and they weren't they remembered, but they weren't aware of where they were or if they are. So my question is, are they? And if so, maybe we could tell the uh, people of Washougal that they are available? We can. Rose, could you make a note in the morning and give Ariana a call? Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Anyone else from the public that would like to address council? Okay, moving into our consent agenda. This evening, the consent agenda consists of three items. Our council minutes of January 22nd, 2013, your workshop minutes of January 28th, 2013, and our regular accounts payable claims in the amount of six, $161,606.60. Council? Approve the consent agenda as read. No objection, so ordered. Uh, moving to new business, our first item is Agenda Bill 03-13, an ordinance on community, community development fee holiday. Mitch. Thank you, Your Honor. Council. Uh, go over the, the fee holiday, the ordinance that's before you this evening. Uh, the we'll discuss is the, the what, where, when. I uh, also like to go through some changes to the draft uh, ordinance that were made since the last time that you reviewed it, and then I'll have a recommended action for you. So again, uh, planning, building, fire, and engineering fees would be waived under this ordinance. It would apply to commercial, industrial, and mixed-use developments within the city, and it would end on December 31st of 2013. So really briefly, I'll go over some of the changes that we made. Uh, one, we were specific about the fees. Uh, we listed them out within the ordinance, what fees would be uh, waived under the ordinance. We got very specific about the timing of application, and we defined uh, the time frames for construction and when that would take place for each of the, the land use and, or building permit and land use types that would come in. We have a building permit by itself, a building permit with plan review, and then a land use permit with site plan, engineering, construction, and ultimately building permit. So we were very specific about the time frames for those. We also added in the uh, failure to comply uh, would result in remittance of the fees, and we added interest in there as well. We used 2.2, which is from the CPI, uh, less the uh, food and energy. So 
and that was the standard that we used for that. We also removed the previously approved projects um, section. We were going to look at going back, uh, but that was going to uh, cause us problems. Our legal counsel advised us against that. So uh, we've talked with uh, individuals that are looking at utilizing this. They're aware of, of when it's going to happen, and they're working with us, and they're waiting and basically to submit until the ordinance is in effect. And last but not least, uh, I mentioned last week that we wanted to do as an emergency ordinance. Uh, however, legal advised us that it doesn't meet the criteria for an emergency ordinance. It's not a uh, public health safety or property emergency. Therefore, we can't utilize the emergency uh, provisions of adoption for the ordinance. So the recommended action to council is to read the ordinance by title only and pass, post, and publish the ordinance in the usual manner. Thank you, Mitch. Council questions? Jennifer? I do. Um, I have a couple of quick questions. Just running through um, that chapter three, I see that 3.91 was skipped. That's water rates. 3.92 was skipped sewer rates. Um, and the 3.96 is uh, making a change fund. So I understand why that was skipped. But I was just wondering about 3.95 and why that was skipped. Do you know what 3.95 is? I do. It's the uh, miscellaneous public works department application fees. For like road modification requests, public Actually, right of way, and very, easement vacation. If, if that is the ordinance, that is a very good one. We should, um, we should correct that. Um, let me get to the... It also includes uh, right of way and easement, uh, vacation request fees, grading permit, plan review and inspection fees, and the gates and other barriers request fees. Those are those are typically not associated with a, um, a development it's in and of itself. Uh, a building permit itself includes the grading and site work done with that. Um, a site plan review includes, uh, and your engineering plan approvals, is your grading work approval so you're not paying an additional fee for that we don't calculate a grading permit fee for engineering plan submittal uh, it's just covered under the engineering plan review okay. so I mean, it's not so you're saying those are like standalone if I want to grade my my lot uh, for I want to stockpile a bunch of dirt or something like mm -hmm. that that um, wouldn't necessarily be related to development of a site for commercial or industrial purposes Okay. Um, well, then I, I have to question 3.97 has quite a bit in it that would uh, apply to, you know, single person residential improvements as well, like roofing or, or residential demo, that sort of thing. It just has a, has a lot in there. And it, it is, it's an all-inclusive list of building permit fees, but the ones that are specific are, would be the only ones that are related to the commercial, industrial, and, um, and the mixed-use development. We didn't go line item by line item within the, that fee ordinance um, because your ordinance would probably be longer than chapter three. Um, but I think we were trying to at least capture that this is the title where the fees will be waived associated with these commercial and industrial and mixed use developments. Um, the, I do want to look at the 3.95 real quick here though. In the meantime, I, I ask unanimous consent that when we get to it, we read the ordinance by title only. He asked for questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no objection, so ordered. <clears throat> An ordinance waiving community <clears throat> development planning, building, fire, and engineering fees associated with certain commercial industrial and mixed-use developments in accordance with the specified criterion for a temporary period. Let's, let's hang on with questions for him until he gets through this one. 
yeah, we don't we don't use in looking at this um, 3.95010 road modification. I would I would say is one that we 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 do utilize under we get road modifications associated with site plan review. Uh, the right of way um, easement and vacation request we don't normally get those. Those are independent. Someone's asking to waive or get rid of the right of way. And the grading permit uh, plan review, again, like I mentioned, that's not an individual plan. That's that's covered in your engineering submittal and your building permit. That's for if you're doing just on a on one lot, you're looking at doing some grading, uh, but it's not associated with the development per se. So the one in that that I would say that we could look at adding is the road modification request. We do get that associated with site plan review, development review. Is there some way, Mitch, that you can easily suggest some language or Don to insert into the ordinance that we have in front of us? Yeah, we, we can be very specific about just listing 3.95010 as being one of the ones that we could list in there. Um, if you wanted to, you could say 3.95 because that's the same way that we did it with all the rest of the fees. We're just picking out the ones that are applicable to commercial, industrial, and mixed-use development. So to, to handle the parliamentary terms here, I move that we pass, post, and publish the ordinance as read. And then I would propose a, I will make a amendment to that motion, propose an amendment to that motion to add WMC 3.95. Let's, let's deal with one motion at a time, Paul. So I've got a motion to pass, post, and publish the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Point of procedure? Mm hmm. I've got questions on this ordinance too. Yeah. Dave, we're going to get to all the questions. Yeah. It, we're just it, trying to get the motion on the table. It, just as a matter of parliamentary, you don't discuss the motion until it's moved? I, I understand. As long as we don't vote on it. No, 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 no. Well, you, you could object to a vote. Okay. I've now got a motion to amend the ordinance under section one, number B, to add in uh, Washington Municipal Code 3.95. Yes, that's what I was saying. That in well, I, what I was saying is that we didn't need to necessarily do that because, like in the other chapters we list, there's other fees that are applicable. That there's a lot more fees that are applicable in some cases, but we're only utilizing those that are applicable when it comes to a commercial or industrial or a mixed-use development. So we listed all those fees in there, but they're 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 only waived if they're associated with that commercial, industrial, mixed-use. Because your engineering plan submittal, when you submit for site plan review, you're required to submit engineering plans, and your engineering plans includes grading. It's included with that. Okay. So I've got a motion. Is there any second? I'll second. The first, the original motion. Okay. I've got a motion. Second the, you're seconding the amendment. I've got a motion and a second to amend the ordinance uh, in section one, subsection B, to include Washington Municipal Code 3.95. Other council questions, discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other questions, other items? Dave? Jennifer, did you have more? I did not. Okay. Dave? Um, I noticed that you've included the scope of this one um, and I'm searching for that term can you throw those three things up there again commercial mixed, mixed and use mixed use uh, mixed use development is uh, includes uh, residential and since the focus of this is commercial and industrial I was wondering why they would why the mixed, in, uh, mixed use was included because our commercial districts um, not only allow for that they encourage that the, that mix of uses so we wanted to again further encourage that that mix of uses to occur. And, and my objection to mixed use being included in this is is the fact that it goes back to the smart growth concept, uh, which.
which then has its roots in Agenda 21, the United Nations document, um, and I'm not in favor of that uh, for all the reasons that are logically objectionable in those two agendas. Um, I, I wasn't aware until tonight that the mixed use was included. Did I miss that somewhere? It's been there the whole time. That we've talked about it. I'll have to watch these things more carefully. Um, I appreciate it. At any rate, to my to my colleagues, that that's my objection to that particular piece. Uh, I don't see it as something that's going to be a big issue, and therefore uh, I understand if you want to pass this thing. Other questions, comments? Someone who's kind of in the same business that you're in, Mitch. Uh, I know that mixed use is kind of a, it's been a trendy thing for 10, 20 years. Uh, it's been a preference for everybody over a nation of people living above their own shops. Uh, I'm not sure how realistic it is, but I don't see any, any, any great harm in it. So I think we would support the uh, ordinance. Yeah, we certainly, um, just for council members that may not know, there is already a uh mission does she have preliminary approval on the old bank building from years back in his block plans and uh, all of that yes he has site plan approval for that. uh one lone wolf already has plans to demolish one of the buildings downtown mm -hmm. and put together a multi-story building that has apartments and or condominiums above it retail on the main floors those kind of things um we're also in discussions with uh with some other folks about uh, potentially coming in and looking at a development that would be mixed, not only mixed use, but mixed uses of housing in the downtown core as well. So if those are areas council doesn't want to venture in towards, at least one of them is already on the book should it move forward. Other ones there are discussions going on that not only encourage additional businesses in the downtown, but additional people living in the downtown to linchpin those businesses. So. As am I. Dave? And I will support this uh, because it's my own fault that I didn't catch that. However, I would ask uh, my fellow council members to take Burnside and Fulton out to Gresham sometime and take a look at the mixed-use developments out there uh, where you've got apartment buildings with no parking lots or very small parking lots, and you've got vacant apartments over shops uh, because nobody wants to live there. Thanks, Mr. Yes. You bet. Probably the showcase project for mixed-use development in the Portland Metro is a Renko station in Hillsborough, which was built uh, from the ground up for that purpose. And uh, it's been very successful. I'm aware of the problems on the Burnside Corridor. But a Renko station does have plenty of parking. Other comments, questions in regards to the fee holiday? Yes. Yeah, I've been to Orenco numerous times. It is very pretty, very nicely done. And that's the key, isn't it? <laughs> Starting out well. So in a mixed-use project, you can't separate, you can't separate fees. Uh, so in other words, you're building a, a retail store downstairs and a, and a house upstairs above it. There's no way to separate those things out. They get they get a, a fee holiday for whatever they're doing for the downstairs retail. Let's say, what about for the home, um, the living quarters? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It would waive your your building permit fees associated with that, but it wouldn't do any of your impact fees or any of the those kind of things. Those things would still be um, collected. <coughs> okay. Questions? Okay, I've got a motion and a second to pass, post, and publish the ordinance as amended in the usual manner. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Moving on to Agenda Bill 4 13, a resolution adopting the strategic plan roadmap. Mr. Evers. 
regard, <clears throat> council members. Uh oh. Apologies. <laughs> to the rescue. It's not a blackout though for a half hour. So right. <laughs> <clears throat> Good one. <laughs> No, Beyonce wasn't involved. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Guard, Council. Uh, before you tonight is a resolution in support of the Strategic Plan Roadmap. Uh, it has been in the works uh, since fall of 2011 during the public engagement campaign uh, where there was significant outreach effort in coffee conversations, um, meetings at the high school, the Best Western down in the port area, uh, walk and talk with business owners, phone surveys, uh, based on the information that was gathered from stakeholders. Um, a strategic planning advisory committee was put together, nine members in the community, and extracted information from the public engagement campaign in developing the roadmap itself, specifically the mission, vision, values, and then ultimately the priority pillars as we move forward as a community and, and an agency. Um, you'll see inside the summary statement it goes into uh, a little bit further detail um, as far as each pillar, um, communication, community engagement, uh, economic development, and core services. And so for consideration tonight, the recommended action is to read the resolution by title only, and pass and post, and post in the usual manner. Thank you, Trevor. Council? Mr. Mayor, I move to read the resolution by title only. Second. I've got a motion and a second to read the resolution by title only. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There was a resolution endorsing the strategic plan roadmap. Oh, if you want to follow proper procedures, Rupert, okay. you should. Mr. Mayor, I move to pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. Second. Got a motion and a second to pass and post in the usual manner. Council discussion. Brent. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry for coming to you on Trevor. I necessary. I think for the, uh, it probably gets wrapped up uh, most succinctly in just saying that we certainly from the administrative side and the staff side we want to make sure that the council is in agreement with the documents and the things that we've put together the things we've heard back from the community and in the way we intend to implement those moving forward and other than discussions at workshops meetings that type of stuff the way that we would memorialize that is is through resolution <laughs> You can you can never bind a future council so and as, as we've discussed in many of the meetings for uh, many different topics the strategic plan itself is meant to be even more moving than our budget is so it would it would be expected that that would be amended and moved Other council questions? Connie Joe? Just a little bit about the history. I'm curious if you know the numbers, Trevor, about how many people attended the public outreach meetings. You know, the not the not the door to door for the businesses, but combined. The uh, outreach at the high school and the Best Western and then here at City Hall. Mm. We averaged about fifteen, ranging from twelve to twenty. And what what else? Starbucks? Yeah, coffee conversations. We uh -huh. had um, one in the morning at the Washougal Crossing, Starbucks. We had four or five attendees. At I was one of them. Coffee conversation. We also had one at Neater's Cafe on E Street. Right. And we also had one down at Papa's Ice Cream downtown in the Washougal Town Square. So an average of 15 on the other big ones. So 15, 30, 45, maybe 60 people. Right, so that was a physical face-to-face. -face. So another yeah. component of the public engagement campaign was the phone surveys. 
that were random off the water bills. I think I'd mentioned that maybe right. in the council retreat. And so we had about uh, 500 come be a phone survey. Then we also had the electronic survey on the city's website where we had upwards of 150 submittals. Then other face-to-face -face at events, special events and community events mm -hmm. during the campaign in the fall of 2011. Okay, thank you. Totaling close to 1,300, which is just under 10% of the population in aggregate. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the mayor for uh, proposing this initiative. Uh, it's a good idea. Secondly, I'd like to f thank the 1,300 people that, that participated, uh, yeah. particularly people like Colonel Terry Babin, who's here tonight, uh, who brought his the depth of his uh, strategic planning and management background to the process. And uh, I'd like to thank the staff uh, for guiding the process and particularly for working with me to work out my concerns so that I could support this thing. Uh, you took a lot of time with me and I appreciate the effort. Uh, having said that, I do have one concern. Um, in Appendix B of the strategic plan, uh, on electronic page 9 of 51 pages in that uh, appendix, it talks about priority development. And the last item says, niche market to businesses that will enhance diversity and add tax dollars. Trevor, could you tell me what the, uh, how you define diversity there? I think diversity, um, you know, reaching back to the conversations we had in the, as an advisory committee, mm -hmm. was the concerns with the lack of restaurants and or amenities or specific businesses or services that were provided in the community, whether it was health care or restaurants or additional coffee shops. It was a diversity in services and products provided in the city of Washougal or in the community, not diversity of specific business owners themselves, if that makes sense. A, a larger portfolio of services in East Clark County, if you will. Yeah, so as I understand it, it's, it's directed toward diversifying our mix of businesses. Um, that, that satisfies my concern. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Other questions, comments? Okay, I've got a motion and a second to pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Trevor, thank you very much for all of your work on this thing for the last uh, the last couple of years. This is, uh, <clears throat> obviously as council knows and certainly as staff knows, this has been a, a Herculean undertaking that, uh, that we diverted Trevor to uh, to working on and uh, Joanne as well and, and the other folks involved so this is something that we were very hopeful that we would be able to bring successfully to a conclusion for you and we'll finish getting the uh, the business plans written for the individual departments and the implementation plan rolled out thank you very much Joyce? I'd like to thank you Trevor for all the time you took when I came over and had concerns and wanted explanations very generous of your time and thank you it's a good product well I would like to make a motion I would like to move that the council issue a thanks a deep heartfelt thanks to the staff and the volunteers especially the steering committee of the strategic planning process a motion in a second that the council issue a thank you to the staff and uh, advisory board that were involved in the strategic planning process any questions all those in favor statement Aye. 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 Oh. Aye. I'm always slow on the gun don't, don't be shy <laughs> I'm moving on no, I'm not shy just uh, oh it's where I'm supposed to jump in isn't it I too just want to take a moment Trevor I didn't know you uh, at all until I started observing your presentations a year ago. And I, I, I witness a man of great expertise and professionalism, very thorough. So I appreciate you very much. And I wish Joanne were here to say thank you to her. And I would assume that in that thank you, Joanne will be included 
Mm -hmm. um, so, and to the staff too, I know you've all worked hard on it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items? Good. Well, I'm new to the process. <coughs> With that, we do still have a motion and a second to issue the thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. With that, we come back to a second opportunity for anyone from the public that would wish to address council. Marilyn? I'm still who I was. Um, when I was a little girl, my mother could give me a few coins and send me off to the store to get milk or bread or whatever. Um, and now that I'm getting older and close to probably the time when they're going to take my car away from me, it becomes <coughs> increasingly important to me and probably to a lot of other people because this is a, uh, a town that has a lot of older people. I'm hoping that uh, when you're doing your planning that you seriously consider ways that those of us who can maybe just walk can get to the basics. Uh, I'm not talking about strip malls, but it would be nice if there were a little store here or there within the residential community where we could get basics. Obviously, uh, you know, were I in this condition that I hope I'm never in, uh, I could call somebody and say I need to get my groceries. That's, you know, you go Safeway or whatever for that. But if I needed milk or bread, I would like to be able to trot that distance, whatever it is. And right now, from where I am to the, um, what is that, the, the, the market who's just on the camera side. What am I trying to say? But anyway, that's a, that's, that's a hike for me now. And um, that's close, relatively speaking. So when you're, you know, you know, when you're looking at little pockets of development where there's an opportunity for one or two lots, it would be really nice. I'm, I don't like strip malls, uh, but having a place where there was a butcher and a grocer next door to, or something like that would be very nice. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is that uh, I repeatedly find that things are going on that I know about only because I'm here and I'm, I'm still thinking that uh, we as a city need to do a better job of PR, of advertising, of um, just letting us know what we are doing. Because, you know, when, when um, Trevor was talking about those meetings. I didn't attend one because I didn't know about it until it was too late. And if only a f the few number that Connie Joe asked about showed up, that doesn't mean a lack of interest. It might be a lack of, of awareness. Um, so I don't know how you go about doing that, but I, I don't think that just that concentrating and depending on the uh, internet is necessarily the best or only way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Anyone else from the public that would like to address council? Okay, moving to mayor's report, I have uh, two items for you this evening. The first one uh, I hesitated to mention as we started the meeting because I didn't want anybody cluing into them any more than we have been, but. Obviously, we have our new screens and we have our new cameras. <clears throat> Rose, you've been doing a tremendous job so far of fading in and out and moving us back and forth. <laughs> I'll let council members uh, contact staff outside of the meeting to uh, just let folks know whether it, it's good to have different things up there when we don't have anything going on or if it's okay just to turn those screens off. <laughs> yeah, at least one of those isn't an option, so. Um, anyway, so 
obviously going through the uh, the shakedowns of that. I think they finished uh, installing Jennifer on Friday. Yes, close to five o'clock. We're night. we're hopefully going to be back here today, yes. and weren't. No. So we've gotten the uh, system functioning so far. We'll see how well it taped. We'll see if it's ready for prime time or hopefully the non-prime time. So anyway, enough on the taping system. Uh, second item of business is in regards to our community development uh, department. I would like to put forward to council's consideration the appointment of Mitch Knipe, our interim community development director, to uh, drop the word interim from his title and name him as our community, community development director. I so move, Mr. Mayor. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Any council discussion? Dave? I, I've never seen a better appointment come from this city. Thank you. Paul? I, I've known Mitch now. Let me turn my mic on. I've known Mitch now for, I think, six or seven years and have always been impressed by his professionalism and his commitment to the city. I think this is an excellent appointment. I'll miss Joanne because I very much like Joanne, but that said, I'm really glad to have Mitch on board. I've known Mitch for about six years, and I have to say uh, I concur with my colleagues. This is an excellent choice, and he certainly has earned it over the past year and a half or so. Been very, very pleased with his work, and I'm very, very happy to give my fun thumbs up on this appointment. And, and Mitch, being someone who's kind of in the same business you're in, you know, different aspects of it, I hope you don't take my gentle teasing and razzing you. Because <laughs> I've run a single one of mine for like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's not let that rub off on him. Uh, any other items from council? I want to echo it. Thank you, Mitch. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to appoint Mitch Knipe as our community community development director. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mitch, congratulations. Are there any items from council? Any items from council? Dave? I, I see some down there. Well, Mr. Mayor, I want to I congratulate you on the special event that you had over the weekend in Portland that was very enjoyable and had a great time there. Thank you very much. On Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> on, a, on a bit more serious note, I had, yesterday I had dinner with one of our legislators and we started talking about some of the things that we talked about at our, our uh, retreat, and that is our structural deficit and you know, how I-747 works into that, the 1% cap on increasing uh, property taxes. And one of the things that was suggested to me is we need to take a look at how much, of, uh, how much revenue we get per year from growth as opposed to the 1%. Basically, the idea was is that by having that one percent cap, you know, your, your additional growth is something you get over that. How much of our property—I don't know how exactly to phrase this question—but how much of our change in property tax revenue is as a result of growth, and how much of it is a result? I know zero was a, was as a result of our one percent this most recent year, actually probably a negative number. Uh, how how much does growth make up for this cap? I guess is my question. And we have that we project it and then we get it then that when they give us our levy numbers they give us an actual number so we have that very precisely over the years it's been pretty modest less than modest really over the last several years one one sometimes less than one um, percent right percent yes so it's um, been very very modest over the last several years I think six seven years ago it was, it was better it was better we could certainly um, uh, that pull that information together for you I, I think what I was hearing is that you know, the contrary argument that you know, the legislator heard and I didn't really have a great response for it because I really wasn't aware I know I'd probably seen it somewhere but I didn't, it didn't dawn me what that figure was mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it's not like, I, like I'm advocating any, doing anything with I-747. I'm not only supporting <coughs> power over that, but I, I just wonder if we just publicize this and took this collectively as cities, whether that might be something, um, some approach we could take. Because it, it is, if that's, if that's the, the contrary, if that's the line that, that, we, that we're getting to support continued application of I-747, and it isn't that much revenue, because I would imagine Washougal probably has a little bit higher growth than most cities do, um, you know, that should be countered. That's a good point. Other items from Council? Dave? We had a uh, regional fire authority meeting on Tuesday, the 29th of uh, January, and uh, the financial consultant, uh, Paul Lewis, that uh, the group hired to uh, look at the feasibility of a regional fire authority, gave us an hour and a half report. And there was a test yesterday on whether or not we got the message. Um, but he came up with two recommendations. Uh, first of all, he noted that most of the benefit that we could get from a regional fire authority we've already obtained from the consolidation of the two fire departments in Washougal and, and Camas. Um, and so that, that impacted on his recommendations. His recommendations are that we continue the fire department consolidation. There are a lot of issues that uh, still need to be shaken out. There are some labor issues, uh, labor contract issues, uh, and a variety of other things about uh, pay and benefits. Um, he also recommended that uh, we not immediately look at the regional fire authority, but keep it uh, on the back burner for the next couple of years and reevaluate it in two to three years based on the success of our consolidation of the two departments. So the group has not come up with a recommendation to pass to the two councils yet, but uh, it looks like they will probably recommend something along these lines uh, that uh, Paul Lewis gave us. And our next meeting is the fourth Tuesday in February. Look for you there. Thank you, Dave. Connie Joe? I want to invite the community to an event Saturday that is being put on by the Community Pregnancy Clinic from of Camas Washougal. Uh, it's a ladies' tea this time, guys. You don't get to come. It's just the girls. And it uh, starts at 1.30. It's going to be at the Fairgate Inn. And just a reminder that the clinic's purpose is to help support women in pregnancy. And a wonderful, wonderful uh, outreach to our community. Lots of teenage girls go through there that have uh, need support. Uh, it's a wonderful process that the kids, that the kids, the ladies go through um, in order to earn things that they need, clothing, uh, bassinets, cribs, everything that you can imagine would be needed for a newborn. They can earn those things through education. And so that's the beauty of the clinic is that it's a way to educate young ladies how to be moms. And so come join me. Love to have you. There's no cost. Uh, donations are accepted. It is a nonprofit. Thanks. Thank you. Joyce? Last week I delivered meals on wheels, loaves and fishes. They uh, put, send the meals out. It's a volunteer service, and I did it through Rotary from our community center, and it is very nice to live in a community where people can have food that aren't able to go and shop or cannot get out. It's a wonderful program, and it deserves everybody's support. Second that. Third, a third that. <laughs> busy week this past week of course the regional fire authority meeting Tuesday night which I, I <laughs> I'm a bit of a I like sitting in a, in a chair learning things and it, it's always fun for me to sit and listen to what Paul Lewis has to say uh, he's very professional and very knowledgeable um, Wednesday, Dave Scott and I went up to Olympia to uh, testify at the legislature about two bills uh, which have to do with stormwater. One of them would 
without going into lots of details, uh, would create more flexibility within the Department of Ecology in, on their grants. And then the other one would make essentially a special case out of Clark County that Clark County could negotiate a separate plan with the Department of Ecology that is more suited to the geology and the situation that we find here in Clark County, which is quite different than any of the other phase one stormwater counties. There was, there were quite a number of, of Clark, it was Clark County people who were up there testifying in favor of that, some against, but uh, quite a group. It was, it was a fun trip. I enjoyed myself. Uh, Thursday, I went to, from 8 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon to a John Shallert seminar called Increasing Sales and Profits as a Destination Downtown. I'm not myself a merchant, but I thought I could learn something that I could bring home to my downtown merchants. And uh, we'll, I mean, it was $40, so it didn't seem exorbitant to see if I could learn anything. And then Thursday night was the grand opening for Gorge Friends of their new offices, which are in the 1887 building, which is right across from uh, uh, Amnesia Tavern. There were easily a hundred people there. It was amazing the number of people who showed up for that. And one of the other things that I wanted to mention publicly is that both Renee T. Catch and uh, Kevin Gorman, who uh, Renee is the local office person here, and she's the lead on Towns to Trails. And Kevin Gorman is the executive director of Gorge Friends. Friend, Friends of the Columbia River Gorge. If you're not familiar with them, they're an interesting organization. It's gorgefriends.org. They are, on the one hand, a land trust. They acquire land and then put it into the public domain for part of the Gorge scenic area. But they also lead a lot of outings, hikes, wildflower walks, uh, bicycle trips on the Klickitat Trail. Uh, so it's a very interesting organization. Both of them went out of their way to say wonderful things about Wes Hickey and Lone Wolf Development. He's been a longtime supporter of Gorge Friends and of the things that we're trying to do on this side of the river to make the Gorge uh, literally an international destination. One of, the, one of the great ideas that's being talked about, and I admit it probably won't be in my lifetime, but it's a thing that people do in Europe more than here. But when you get to be my age and hair color, the idea of putting on a 50-pound pack and hiking 12 or 15 miles and then sleeping on the ground doesn't really have a lot of appeal. On the other hand, the idea of uh, leaving the... Uh, the uh, hiker's hut or the bed and breakfast and walking down the trail until two o'clock in the afternoon and then settling down in front of a glass of red wine, that has a lot more appeal. And that's part of the plan of where they're trying to go with this towns to trails thing, is that it would connect all the way, essentially from the Heritage Trail around Lacamas Lake, all the way out to Biggs Junction, cross the river, there actually of course there's crossings at all of the bridges the pacific crest trail actually crosses bridge of the gods but then come back down the oregon side kind of the same way and so it it's kind of a thrilling idea that uh, that gorge friends have been working on now for a couple of decades actually and as i said there were over 100 people there so it was really exciting and uh I guess that's it. I have two more things. Harvey, let me talk to you after the meeting. And uh, I wanted to thank Rose. She's done a great job here. She's new at this TV producer thing. And uh, I think she's done a fabulous job tonight. So thank you, Rose. 
Any other items? Jennifer. Yes. Um, I just wanted to mention that I read today that the um, Kamish Wishugal Chamber is uh, putting out the notice for their scholarships this year for students from both Wishugal High School and Camas High School. It's a $1,000 uh, for scholarships. And I understand some years they actually do not Give, have not had anyone apply. So <laughs> if you know of any high school students that are going on to higher ed and are interested, um, please encourage them to apply. Um, I'm sure they would love to give the money. So I also attended the RFA meeting, very, very interesting meeting, um, and well attended. Um, and I also attended the Portland Seafood and Wine Festival, uh, which was a mayor's uh, company's event, and it was wonderful as well uh, to benefit mul multiple sclerosis, and um, had a great time, and uh, I just wanted to, to thank him for doing that, and um, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> or a few TV stations and a lot of radio stations and I don't have television. newspapers and I don't speaking of mailing lists quite a bit I wanted to mention yes. this is the magazine of the Association of Washington Cities you can't see the picture very well but that oh, is God. a picture of Mayor Guard right in front of the tunnel and there is a one two really two page article uh, on the mayor and so I will leave my copy out on the table there for anybody who wants to look at it hopefully it's more on the community than it is on me and that was it is it is it was very kind of no it see to uh, to list Washington as one of their profile cities so. and I, it's it's a very good article we should be proud of it We got a lot of it. <laughs> and even the good old dial radios. You can even get us on a crystal oh. set. We can go way back. Crystal set. Yeah, I do have one of those. <laughs> okay. So the purpose of my hand to be raised is that CTRAN, I want to remind the community that CTRAN is holding a public hearing concerning the bus route 41 that it impacts Washougal. I don't believe it's a negative impact. I believe it's a, a money saving opportunity, which we always want to save our tax dollars and spend them well. So if you have any input, um, feel free to join us, not tomorrow night, but February 12th at CTRAN in Vancouver at um, 5.30 we begin. And you can also make comments on the internet on their uh, website. Any last items from council members? If not, I would adjourn or uh, welcome a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We've got a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.